All right. Hey, it's Ross Lugman from Alternative Homes Today. And this week we're doing our first ever reader Q&A. And we have a question from Maria who writes, Hi Ross, I'm looking for a lakefront lot in Kentucky and would like to build a small home of 600 to 800 square feet there. There are so many companies that offer cabin kits that I can put up myself. I have no construction experience, but I'm willing to try anything. I don't need a big space, it's just for me and my dogs. Do you have any suggestions or recommendations for doing this? It's becoming a little overwhelming and I'm beginning to doubt that I can even do it. I'd be so grateful for any advice you can offer. Thanks so much, Maria. Well, Maria, I actually think that going with a kit home is a great idea. And I have a couple of other tips that you can use uh, as you move through the design process. All right, so my first tip for you is to go smaller. And the reason I say that is you're in the design phase now and you're thinking about what you can build and you're getting a little intimidated. Uh, it's always great if you, if you don't have a lot of experience to just shrink the size of the project. It's pretty basic and I have a couple of techniques that you can use to get uh, the same amount of use out of a smaller space. My first tip for going smaller is simply to minimize the walls. So here we have a typical cabin layout divided into separate spaces. Now if we remove the walls and move our elements to the outside edge, we can actually reduce the footage by half and still fit all of our functions comfortably in there. Now the interesting thing is, is the floor plan on the right actually feels larger just because of the way that it's laid out. So note that a larger cabin with lots of divisions can actually feel more cramped than a smaller cabin with an open design. My second tip for going smaller is to maximize your field of view. So here's a typical cabin plan that we might use to lay out our space, but what's not taken into account are the views out. It's almost like designing a cabin with no windows, which from the inside would seem pretty claustrophobic. It kind of makes you feel like you need to enlarge your plan. But as we know, most cabins do have windows, and so when you utilize those outdoor views, you can actually shrink the amount of interior space that you need because your perception of the space is really limited by your field of view, not necessarily the walls. You'll notice that a lot of tiny home designs have more than their share of windows to leverage the exterior views and expand the perception of the space. They oftentimes even incorporate skylights to expand the perception of space even further, enabling occupants to feel a sense of expansiveness even in a very small floor plan. So what you can do is go out to your land and see what views you like and go ahead and incorporate those views into the holistic design of your cabin. This enables you to build a smaller cabin that feels a lot larger than it is. Alright, so my second piece of advice is to focus on the subsystem. I know it can be really intimidating when you look at the entire house and think, you know, how am I ever going to build that? But remember, it's all going to really happen one board at a time, one bag of concrete at a time, one hammer, one nail at a time. Um, and like my man Dave Larson says, You learn to think about the house as a large system that's made up of subsystems. That way it's manageable for the DIY builder, because it can be very intimidating to look at the whole house and say, I can't do that. But can I put down a footing and a stem wall? Well, sure. How tough is that? I'll form it up if it's a monopore, I'll lay block if it's not, and yeah, I can manage that. So after hearing that quote, you may be wondering well, what exactly is a stem wall? And that's a perfect example of focusing on the subsystem. Instead of looking at the whole house, you can zoom in on one particular thing that you need more information on, and you can research that thing instead of being overwhelmed with all the systems of the entire house. So my third tip is actually to boost your skills. And it sounds simple enough, but if you've ever gone to a foreign country where you didn't know the language, you know that picking up a dictionary before you go and learning a few words you know, helps you feel like you can handle it and maybe drops your anxiety level a little bit. So this is along the same lines. Uh, you can pick up some home building skills at places like Yes Tomorrow in Vermont. There are natural building workshops all over the U.S. and all over the world. And for that matter, there are a lot of tiny home workshops springing up where you can learn framing skills and just general home building skills. 
Um, and you said that you're intimidated, so I think that boosting your skills is really going to make the project look more attainable. And also using uh, tip number one, dropping the project down a couple notches in size, I think is, is really going to help you um, along with boosting your skills. So Maria, that's my A to your Q. Good luck with the project. I really want to see pictures when you're finished. And other readers, if you have any advice for Maria, if you know of a kit, cabin kit company that uh, you recommend, or if you want to give her some advice to help her take on this project that you think would be useful, uh, that would be awesome. Please, please leave that in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'm Ross Lubin for Alternative Homes Today, and I'll see you next time.